Welcome to Altium Designer Shaping the PCB. In this module, we will create and modify the PCB shape using a number of methods. Let's start by opening up the typical default PC board. Now with the PCB document open, click on the number one key to enter the board planning mode. This special mode provides tools for the modification and customizing of the PCB shape. These are located under the design dropdown menu. You will notice the change in PCB color from the typical black to green in board planning mode. In this example, we only see one layer stack region defined. If this was a rigid flex design, there would be multiple regions named and visible. In the 2D and 3D normal viewing modes, the PCB is black and cannot be selected. In this mode, we have direct access to it. The connected cube design is a rigid flex PCB. Let's look at that in board planning mode so that we can see the regions defined using the names of Rigid and Flex. We won't be covering Rigid Flex PCB design planning in Essentials, but our board planning mode provides a way to create the needed regions for the Flex Rigid PC board design. Looking at the SL1's PC board in board planning mode, we can look at the various ways to edit, recreate, or generate the PCB shape. Looking under the Design pull-down menu, we see a series of new options in board planning mode. Redefine, Edit, and Modify. It's also possible to move the board in this mode to allow for border graphics like we saw in the SL1 example design. This can be done either from the Design menu or by using the right mouse button holding it and then dragging the entire board. If the placement of the PCB would interfere with the graphics being added, moving it might be needed. Turning our attention back to the basic PCB, let's explore editing the PCB starting with Edit Board Shape. Selecting Edit Board Shape, you will see the PCB outline highlight with solid boxes at the vertices and hollow ones in the line segment midpoints. To stretch out a board edge, simply move the mouse to that edge. Now with the line highlighted and the arrow showing, click on the line dragging the mouse to resize. This is a convenient way to increase or decrease the board along one edge. If a more elaborate change is needed, like changing the endpoints of the board segments, click on the solid box and move the mouse to alter the shape, like so. Again, Ctrl Z is our friend if we don't want to keep the change. If we need to add more line segments to create a non rectangular shape, say an extension along one edge, click on the Design Modify Board Shape option, and the mouse button now can place additional line endpoints. These can be added and moved to create a number of complex shapes. One of the other more flexible options is the Redefine Board Shape. Using this, we can create any shape needed by left-clicking to place endpoints. Once we have a closed shape, or a closed shape can be inferred from the current points, we can right-click to close it and create the PCB. One interesting feature that Altium provides is user-driven line drawing modes. So rather than having just straight lines, there are a few built-in options accessible while drawing the lines. While in the redefined board shape mode, hold the shift key down and tap the space bar. You will see the status bar change at the bottom of the window, indicating what the current line drawing mode is. Tapping the space bar, we see there are a number of options. For those options with arcs, the radius can be changed on the fly by hitting the period or comma key to increase or decrease the arc. Hitting the tilde key will open up a window with the available options. Consider trying some of these. To see the bend direction change while drawing, click on the spacebar. Those methods are basic, but somewhat limited. Another option is to create the desired board shape with connected lines and arcs using graphics. This would be done in the normal board 2D drawing mode. Hitting 2, we can now try adding graphics and using them to generate the PCB. The simplest one uses a circle. Here we select the circle and place its center and outer edge. With it still selected, click on Design, Board Shape, Define from Selected Objects. As you can see, this works quite well. Don't forget to delete the original graphics. Any closed shape can be used. If the shape is not closed, some weird results or warnings may occur. We can always regenerate from the board shape primitives on any layer using the Design, Board Shape, Create Primitives from Board Shape option. Select the line width and the layer for the generated primitives. 
I use this feature to put the board outline onto a layer that I later name board outline, as this is helpful for some fab houses. Up to this point, we've been creating the board shape without any aids to guide us. Using grids can provide a faster and more accurate means to generate the board shape. Clicking on the grid icon, it looks like a screen to me, and select Set Global Snap Grid, we can change the grid to something reasonable for our purposes. So if we want a 3 by 6 and a half inch board, we'll set the grid to 500 mils. This gives us the largest granularity we can use for our target size. Now we can move the board to vertices in 500 mil steps. Before we start to adjust the board, we should talk about the concept of the board origin. Under the Edit menu, there is an entry called Origin. Using the Set option to enable placement of the 0, 0 board coordinates, like so, this makes sizing the board much easier, as now we start with that corner at 0, 0. So, with the grid set to 500 mil and the origin set, adjusting the board is made much easier. Grabbing a side, we can stretch it out to the XY location indicated on the bottom left of the screen is at the right coordinates, in our case 3000 in the Y and 6500 in the X. Now we have a board accurately sized. Resetting the grid can be done using the right mouse button and selecting the Snap Grid option. This brings up a sub-menu window where we could pick one of the options or select the X and Y grids and set them independently. Again, if your board size has different dimensional requirements like 6.5 in the X and 3.1 in the Y, setting X to 500 mil and Y to 100 mil would make sense. When a complex board shape is required, using a template to drive the board shape is preferred. With Altium, it is possible to generate the PCB from a DXF file that the MCAD engineering group created. First, we would need the DXF file for importing into the PCB. To import the DXF file, go to File, Import, DXF, DWG, and enter the DXF file. This brings up an important configuration window. The critical part is to ensure that the scale selected matches the units of the DXF file created. One easy check is to look at the projected size to see if it's right. Adjust as needed for your particular file. Now the other useful option is to determine where within the PCB view the DXF primitives will be placed. Use the Select button and place the origin in a good place to allow room for the DXF import. I have seen DXF files with their origin in the middle or the top. It helps to know where the file's origin is when you go ahead and place it into the PCB space. If you get it wrong, you can always do a Control-Z and retry. Hitting OK, you will see the DXF primitives placed. Notice that there's more to this DXF than just a PC board outline. This can be confusing as the projected size in the DXF menu does not reflect the PCB, but the entire set of primitives, which in this case includes graphics. Now with the primitives still selected, we can use the Design, Board Shape, Define from selected objects to create the new PCB. One thing to note, delete the primitives as they are no longer needed. 